In this section we will study LTE Air Interfaces. After completing this section, you will be able to Explain the evolution of OFDMA Describe the characteristics of SCFDMA Explain different Air LTE interface features such as frame structure, cyclic prefix and slot details Explains LTE channels, physical channels, transport channels and logical channels OFDM, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplex, technology is used for high-speed data communications. It is evolved from three key aspects, Frequency Division Multiplexing or FDM, Multi-Carrier Multiplexing or MCM and Orthogonality. FDM technology divides the available bandwidth into many carriers and allow multiple users to access the system simultaneously. Each user transmit their data on a different subcarrier. To avoid interference guard bands are provided between subcarriers. Since guard band don't transmit any information they introduce spectrum inefficiency. With carrier multiplexing user can split the data into multiple subcarriers and transmit them in parallel. In multi-carrier FDM. The user data is converted from serial to parallel. Then the parallel data streams are sent over multiple subcarriers. A higher data can be achieved by using multi-carrier multiplexing. OFDM adds the orthogonal feature to the multi-carrier FDM. Orthogonality means do not cause interference with each other. In OFDM, the subcarriers are defined to be orthogonal. This allows subcarriers to overlap and save bandwidth. Therefore, OFDM achieves both higher data rate and better spectrum efficiency. OFDM divides the high-speed data stream into multiple slow streams. The substreams are transmitted over multiple subcarriers in parallel. At the receiver, the parallel data stream is combined back into a serial data stream. As shown in the figure, we know that the system needs multiple pairs of transmitters and receivers, one pair per subscriber. This results in high system costs. If we could add a module A at the transmitter side for integrating the parallel signals and a module B at the receiver side for distributing the signals back into parallel, then only one transmitter slash receiver pair is needed. Fourier transform or FD and inverse Fourier transform or IFD fulfills the functions of module B and A respectively. This enables the use of one transmitter and one receiver and reduces system costs. Fourier transform is calculated based on continuous signals which require an infinite number of computations. In order to simplify computation, we sample the original continuous signal and get a series of discrete sample values. The calculations based on the discrete sample is called discrete Fourier transform or DFT. To further accelerate the computation speed, fast Fourier transform or FFT was proposed. FFT is a special case of DFT. It requires that the number of samples to be power of 2 such as 16, 32, 64 and 128. As IFT is a reverse procedure of FT, the counterpart of DFT is inverse DFT or IDFT and counterpart of FFT is inverse FFT or IFFT. Each OFDM symbol consists of two parts, cyclic prefix or TCP followed by useful symbol time or TU. The mobile propagation channel is typically time-dispersive, 
multiple replicas of a transmitted signal are received with various time delays due to multipath resulting from reflections the signal incurs along the path between the transmitter and receiver. This leads to at least a partial loss of orthogonality between subcarriers. The result is intersymbol interference not only within a subcarrier, but also between subcarriers. To prevent an overlapping of symbols and reduce intersymbol interference, a guard interval called cyclic prefix or CP is created by copying the tail end of the symbol to the beginning of the symbol period, thus creating a guard time. CP helps combat intersymbol interference or ASI. The duration of CP is based on the multipath and the base spread characteristics of the radio environment. Let us look at how a simple OFDM transmitter works. A high-speed data stream is divided into multiple substreams by a process of serial to parallel conversion. Each substream is carried by a subcarrier. Subcarriers operates in a different frequency and has a different strength. The frequency values are related to each other such that the subcarriers are orthogonal to each other. The subcarriers carries the information and pass through the IFFT module. IFFT transforms the frequency components into a time domain signal. To this time domain signal cyclic prefix is added and is sent over the channel. The key benefit of IFFT is that it requires only one transmitter to transmit multiple substreams of data over the air. Let us look into how the simple OFDM receiver works. Only one receiver is needed to receive the signal. The operations at the OFDM receiver are exactly reversed to those operations performed at the transmitter side. From the received signal cyclic prefix is removed and the processed signal then passes through the fast Fourier transform or FFT module. FFT transforms the time signal into a set of frequency components. Each frequency component carries the information of the data substream. These data substreams are combined by the parallel to serial conversion process to get back the high speed data stream. Now, let us look into OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiple access. For the downlink 3GPP chose OFDMA for LTE, which incorporates elements of time division multiple access, TDMA. OFDMA allows subsets of the subcarriers to be allocated dynamically among the different users on the channel. OFDMA allows multiple users to access subcarriers simultaneously. In this example, three users share multiple subcarriers. The assignment of subcarriers for a user can be changed at every symbol time. OFDMA results in a more robust system with increased capacity. On the uplink, the physical layer in LTE is based upon variant of OFDMA called Single Carrier Frequency Division Multiple Access or SCFDMA. SCFDMA is a new single carrier multiple access technique which has similar structure and performance to OFDMA. A salient advantage of SCFDMA over OFDM is low to peak to average power ratio, PAPR, thus, increasing battery life. So how does DFT spread OFDMA works? The high-speed input data stream is first converted into blocks of n bits each using a serial-to-parallel converter. DFT spreads each input modulation symbol over n output signals. Each of the n output signals from the DFT is fed as inputs into an endpoint IFFF function. 
Typically N in N point DFT is much smaller than M in M point IFFT. The mapping of DFT output signals to the IFFT input signals is based on LTE specific subcarrier mapping function. The output of the M point IFFT is a single carrier type domain signal. DFT spread OFDMA is also called Single Carrier Frequency Division Multiple Access or CFDMA. This sequence of processing leads to very low peak to average power ratio or PAPR. Let us see how SCFDMA transmitter works. Assume UE has four data symbols P1, P2. P3 and P4 use for transmission. These symbols are converted from serial to parallel and run through the four-point DFT. The DFT provides frequency domain sample S1, S2, S3 and S4. Each frequency domain sample is then mapped to subcarrier F1, F2, F3 and F4. The map data can be combined together using 8-point IFFT which produces composite time domain signal. The SCFDMA receiver operations are very similar to those performed at the transmitter, except that the processing of the incoming SCFDMA symbols is in the reverse order. Following up on our prior example, the received SCFDMA signal is applied to an 8-point FFT to produce the frequency domain equivalent samples S1, S2, S3 and S4. These samples are applied to 4-point IDFT to get back the parallel stream of UE data, which is then applied to parallel to serial converter to receive UE data symbols P1, P2, P3 and P4. The physical layer supports the two multiple access schemes previously described. OFDMA on the downlink and SCFDMA on the uplink. In addition, both paired and unpaired spectrum are supported using frequency division duplexing, FDD, and time division duplexing, TDD, respectively. For purposes of this course. We assume frequency division duplexing, FDD, is used, which means that the uplink transmissions are on one frequency and the downlink transmissions are on another. Although the LTE downlink and uplink use different multiple access schemes, they share a common frame structure. The frame structure defines the frame, slot, and symbol, in the time domain. All transmissions, in either direction, are organized into 10 milliseconds frames. Frames help the UE, determine when certain events will occur, such as system broadcast messages for example, a new master information block, MIB, is sent every 4 frames. Frames are subdivided into 10 subframes, SFs, each one millisecond long. System resources are allocated on a subframe basis. Similarly, each subframe contains two slots, each being 0.5 milliseconds long. So, in a 10 milliseconds frame, there are 10 1 millisecond subframes and 20 0.5 millisecond slots. We will see that a slot is made up of either 6 or 7 OFDM symbols, depending upon the OFDM requirements for the cell. LTE defines two possible values for cyclic prefix duration, normal CP and extended CP. The first one called normal CP, is defined for radio environments with low multipath delay spread. Typical urban environment LTE deployments use normal CP value which is about 5 microseconds. The second one, extended CP, 
is used in radio environments with a high delay spread value. LTE defines extended CP value to be approximately 15 microseconds. Mentioned, each slot is made up of 6 or possibly 7 OFDM symbols, depending on the cell specific OFDM configuration. When we consider that RF carrier bandwidth is subdivided into subcarriers, spaced 15 kHz apart. We can look at the phi frame in both the frequency and time domains. The number of subcarriers depends on the bandwidth of the channel. A resource element is the smallest unit in the physical layer and occupies one OFDM or SCFDMA symbol in the time domain and one subcarrier in the frequency domain. NRE will carry one modulation symbol, a representation of 1 to 6 bits of data, depending upon the modulation scheme used. For example, a quadrature phase shift king, QPSK, modulation symbol represents 4 bits of data. EE simplifies resource allocation by grouping REs into resource blocks. One resource block holds 12 subcarriers for one slot, typically 7 symbols. Resources are allocated in the uplink and downlink by RBs. A resource block, RB, is the smallest unit that can be scheduled for transmission. An RB physically occupies 0.5 milliseconds, one slot, in the time domain, and 180 kHz in the frequency domain. The number of RBs available during a 1 millisecond allocation period, subframe, depends upon the size of the carrier bandwidth. For example, a 10 MHz carrier will have 600 decibel subcarriers. Since 10 MHz is divided by 15 kHz, which is the spacing between each subcarrier, yielding about 667 subcarriers, subtracting 1 subcarrier for DC and 66 subcarriers for the guard, we are left with 600 data and reference signal subcarriers. Dividing 600 subcarriers by 12 subcarriers results in 50 RBs that can be allocated at a time. This means that in 10 MHz, up to 50 users could be receiving data during the same subframe. LTE further organizes the file layer by defining eight physical channels in addition to some downlink signals which are transmitted separately. There are five channels defined for the downlink and three for uplink. LTE doesn't have the dedicated channels, which is a characteristic of packet-only systems such as UMTS. Before a UE can read any of the downlink channels, it must be synchronized to the downlink slot timing in frame structure. Synchronization signals are used by the UE to synchronize with the slot timing and to align to the framing in the downlink. Reference signals, RSs, are always transmitted at a constant per RE power and can be used by the UE to take measurements of the downlink of a cell. After the overview, let us now look into downlink physical channels in more detail. As discussed, there are five physical channels defined for the downlink in LTE. Physical Broadcast Channel PBCH, it is used to transmit broadcast channel. It is sent once every frame and carries the master information block. Physical Control Format Indicator Channel, PCFICH, it is sent one subframe and indicates PDCCH symbol. 
Physical Downlink Control Channel, PDCCH. This channel is sent at the beginning of every subframe is used by all the UE in a cell to determine if they are being scheduled for downlink or uplink date. This channel assigns PDSCH slash push. Physical Downlink Shared Channel, PDSCH. It is sent one subframe and carries all downlinks in galling and traffic. Since, PDSCH is shared by all UE in the cell, the PDCCH indicates which ASIN cell will receive the data. Physical Hybrid ARQ Indicator Channel, PHICH. This channel let UE know if the uplink data transmissions have been received and successfully decoded. There are three physical channels defined for the uplink in LTE. Physical Random Access Channel, PRACH. It is used by UE for uplink synchronization. The operator defines how often the PRACH channel will be available. It will be at least once every other frame for the duration of one subframe. Physical Uplink Shared Channel PUSCH. It is used for all uplink traffic and signaling. Since, PUSCH is shared by all SNSL, PDCCH controls who can send data and when. Physical Uplink Control Channel, PUCCH. If UE has to send control information to E Node B but doesn't have the grant to send data on PUSCH. The UE can use PUCCH. This channel can carry scheduling requests, HARQ ACNAC for downlink data transmission and downlink channel quality information from the UE. Figure shows different types of channels within the LTE. Physical channels are transmission channels that carry user data and control messages. The physical layer offers information transfer services to MAC and higher layers. Transport channels are described by how and with which characteristics data is transferred over the radio interface. Transport channels are present between MAC and physical layer. Logical channels define what type of data is transferred between UE and ENB. MAC sublayer offers different kind of data services to RLC in form of logical channels. Logical channels are classified into control channels, for control plane information transfer, and traffic channels, for transfer of user plane data. The LTE transport channels vary between the uplink and the downlink as each has different requirements and operates in a different manner. Three transport channels are defined in downlink and two transport channels are defined in uping. Broadcast channel or BCH. The LTE downlink transport channel maps to broadcast control channel or BCCH. This channel is used to broadcast info in the entire cell. Downlink Shared Channel or DLSCH. This channel is used for transmitting downlink data. It supports HARQ, Dynamic Link Adaptation. It is used by many logical channels. Paging Channel or PCH. To convey the information for paging control channel or PCCH on downlink. Uplink shared channel or ULSCH. This transport channel is the main channel for uplink data transfer. It is used by many logical channels. Random access channel or RAJ, used for transmitting paging information. The logical channels cover the data carried over the radio interface. Logical channels are classified into control channels and traffic channels. Control channels are LTE logical control channels to carry the control plane information.
Traffic channels are LTE logical traffic channels to carry the user plane data. There are four logical control channels and one logical traffic channel. Broadcast control channel or BCCH. This is a downlink control channel used for broadcasting system control information. Paging control channel or PCCH. This is a downlink control channel used for paging information when searching a unit on a network. Common Control Channel or CCCH. This is a bidirectional channel, used for random access information, for example for actions including setting up a connection. Dedicated Control Channel or DCCH. This is a point-to-point -point bidirectional channel, used for carrying user-specific control information, for example for controlling actions including power control, hand over, etc. Dedicated traffic channel or DTCH. This is a point-to-point -point bidirectional channel, used for the transmission of user data. This completes the module. Click Next Topic from Navigation Menu.